Hello, my friends. How are you? Check this out. Let's see if we can... Oh, there you go. Yes. You see that, don't you? Look at that. That's not shadows. That is actually the wood in this squire by Fender. This is the debut model. The nut looks really, really good. It feels really, really good. Nothing's gonna catch your hand or anything. And these fret ends, if this thing will focus a little better, be good. I guess it's not gonna be good, but anyway. The sides of these frets are not going to hurt you. Matter of fact, you can barely... Well, I take that back. You have to really rub towards the inner parts of them. You can feel just a tiny little bit. Just a tiny little bit. But nothing is going to hurt you. I've been in guitar shops and I've seen and checked out eight, nine thousand dollar fenders and Gibsons alike that the fret ends are horrible. They will cut you. And this is a hundred and twenty dollar guitar here. And the fret ends are wonderful. So, which I have to give full credit to the Average Joe's Guitar Channel. He's the one that turned me on to this. And there's quite a few other people that are catching on as well. Now, Joe has the red one, the Dakota Red. I have the Sunburst. And there is a black one out there as well, the same model as this. Of course, you can tell mine doesn't look stock anymore. I put these silvery Gibson 50 style knobs on here. And I put a black switch tip. But everything else is stock. Pickups are stock. The electronics, the switch, it's still all stock. Strap buttons. You see it's a fendery looking strap button there and here. And what it comes with is your wiggle stick. Truss rod adjusting wrench and you can barely see it in there. The saddle adjusting wrench. And I think that is your warranty information. I'm not positive, but that's what you get in the package along with that box right there. Which is a little inner box in there, but it's like a tray. Now there's other guitars out there. I guess I'll rattle off a few names, which I have had experience. Well, one of them, of course, the Ashthorpe. It's a good guitar. It's a really good guitar. Comes with a bag, comes with strap, uh, some picks, it comes with some extra strings and all that stuff. This does not, but the Ashthorpe, it had some fret issues on the sides. I had two of them. And they both had fret issues on the sides. I had to fix those before I could really mess with it. This one here, did not have to fix anything on the sides. Even though this did not come with a bag. But still. It, I mean, it's a, this is a sweet guitar right here, guys. And it to be all stock, it's really nice. I'm planning on modding this one out a little bit. Not much, so I'm going to change the pickups. Maybe the wiring harness, Maybe. I might even leave that switch in there for a little while longer because it's not broke, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? You know. But those pickups are a little bit on the weak side. Now, there's a story behind why I chose to get this particular color here of this guitar. I used to have a 2013 model Squire Affinity 
which I had changed over to this look for a really good friend of mine, and he bought it from me. It had the very same gold with the outline of black on the lettering there, where it says Squire. His was a 2013 model when I sold him. So, um, last year, which is 2023, I bought the guitar back, along with another guitar. He said he just didn't feel it anymore. He said he just couldn't, he had, he's had diabetes, diabetes and stuff. Couldn't feel his fingertips, and he couldn't really see himself keeping it to play and stuff, and be effective at learning. So I bought it back, along with another guitar. So, what I did was, I... Turned around and sold it. So, time went on. Sadly, the first part of this year, he got really sick, had a couple strokes and stuff like that, and, and he didn't make it. So, I got the feeling kind of bad about selling the guitar. Well, you don't never know when it's your time. So, how was I to know he wouldn't be with us anymore when I sold it? So, there's no way I can get it back because who knows who has it now. So I decided to get this color here as in, as I guess you could say, a tribute to old Davo. This looks very, very similar to the one he had. And the good shot about the whole thing is I did keep, I did have the other guitar up for sale on Marketplace, but then immediately after he left us, I took the ad down and said, nope, I ain't selling it. I'll, I'll show you that guitar in another film. But what I'm going to do with this one is I will put better pickups in here. Maybe mess with the wiring. I will add a little magic switch right there between, right along in there somewhere. That will enable me to engage the neck pickup and the bridge pickup together like a Telecaster, as long as your switch position is way down here in the back, all the way in the back. One more up with the magic switch turned on, you get all three of them. But when this switch is all the way in the back like this, and you flick the other switch up, you get this pickup and this pickup together, kind of like a Telecaster. But other than changing out the pickups and adding that little magic switch, I think I'll leave everything else alone for now. And just when this, when stuff just goes bad or wears out or whatever like that, I will go back in there and replace stuff as needed. Let's turn this over and take a look at the backside, shall we? Get it over here like that. There we go. Now, as Joe said, this model does not have a skunk, skunk stripe on the back. It's got your. I guess, yeah, I guess you can call these your generic style tuners. You can see by the upside down serial number, this is a 24 model. Crafted in China. Designed and backed by Fender. There we go. It even has the burst on the back. Yes. There's something about old Davo that always got me. For some reason, he had to have the back cover on his. For some reason, I don't know why. I gotta have the back cover. I gotta have the back cover. Me? I don't really care about the back cover. And I did add two more springs to it. And I did take these screws and put them in just a little bit to even that up and make it look even. That I guess it's just an OCD thing. But anyway, it's got the small block bridge block in there. Tremolo block, and you can tell that it's very close to the edge. Now this body here is a thinner style body like the Affinity series. But thinner doesn't necessarily mean worse. There you go. Now I might possibly put a fatter block in here, like a steel block. Guitar Fetish has these shorty, they call it a shorty block. Because for your thinner affinity squires and such. About 25, 30 bucks or so, something like that. 
That's all down the track, though. It's, it's not really important right now at this time. Let me run up this neck here just very carefully with this. There's not much going on. There's a little bit of movement in the wood as far as like the design. But I'm thinking about maybe get some tongue oil and put some tongue oil on here. It might bring that out a little bit more. But overall, guys, 120 bucks on Amazon. This is, I mean, the texture of this, it feels nice. It's not really slick. It's not, it doesn't grimy and grunge your hands and stuff like that. It doesn't, it, it, it has a nice texture to it. It really does. So, with that said, I guess the next time you see this guitar, I will be doing a sound sample. I will be documenting a sound sample with the all stock pickups in here. And I will also, if I don't forget, guys, I had to stay on my case about things. I will also document the stock weight of this one as well. Well, there you go, guys. This is Birdman P16. I want everyone to have a wonderful day, wonderful night, wherever you are. And remember, keep rocking. Make the world a better place. Sayonara. Six pounds, three ounces. Or, 2.8 kilograms.